This is Timeless Leadership, where we explore the values and principles that drive extraordinary leaders. We look for the timeless virtues that are just as relevant in the 21st century as they were in the first century. Universal truths that will help make us better versions of ourselves. Well, hello there. This is Scott Monty. Welcome back to Timeless Leadership. I think we have quite a few new listeners now, thanks to that last episode with Rick Wilson. And if you are new here, what I like to do every other episode is just sit down with you, just you and me, have a little chat for a few minutes. It's not as long as the one-on-one interviews, but I like to explore something that we talked about in the previous episode. And the last episode with Rick was really about integrity, finding your true moral center and knowing how to stick to it. And listening to Rick's story, you can tell it wasn't always easy for him. He stayed true. He knew what he believed in, and he didn't waver from it, even though it cost him dearly from a professional sense. Now, this is some stuff I like to talk about on the newsletter as well. And if you're not signed up yet at TimelessTimely.com, that's the Timeless and Timely newsletter, go ahead and check that out. It's available through Substack, and you can get it delivered right to you or to the Substack app, whatever works for you. And also, if you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, maybe you'd like some advice on an issue that you're struggling with, a process that you're trying to work out, a new job that you've taken and you're trying to adjust, maybe something with your company's culture, send me a note at timeless at scottmonte.com. That's timeless at scottmonte.com. Well, the thing I wanted to talk to you today about was integrity. As I said, it is what Rick talked about last time and I wanted to explore it a little more. I saw that Charlie Munger died last week. Charlie was the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, famously known as uh, Warren Buffett's company. And Charlie was just days away from his 100th birthday. And he had been a, well, not lifelong advisor, but for many, many decades had been a close advisor to Warren Buffett. Warren really took Charlie's advice to mind. And Warren told a story when he was giving a talk to an MBA class about what they looked for in the people that they hired. And he laid out three things, intelligence, energy, and integrity. And he and Charlie were aligned on this. They both believed in intelligence, energy, and integrity. And he went further to say, Look, if you don't have the last one, if you don't have integrity, all bets are off. And if you do hire someone without integrity, you certainly don't want them with intelligence and energy because they'd be able to get ahead much quicker and faster in a way that lacks integrity. That's the last thing they wanted. But ultimately, it comes down to what kind of a person do you want to be? You need to identify some of the attributes in other leaders that you admire, other people in your life that you admire, and build those into your habits, into your practice. There was a, an annual report from a company in 1998. Speaking of Berkshire Hathaway, you know, Warren Buffett is famous for his letter, his annual letter to shareholders. He discloses a lot of what matters to him in those shareholder letters. They were a great read. But there was this 1998 annual report from a company where they talked about four things that led their business that were kind of their North Star. Respect, integrity, communication, and excellence. And with respect, they said, we treat others as we would like to be treated ourselves. We do not tolerate abusive or disrespectful treatment. Ruthlessness, callousness, and arrogance don't belong here. Not about integrity. 
They said, we work with customers and prospects openly, honestly, and sincerely. When we say we will do something, we will do it. When we say we cannot or will not do something, then we won't do it. Communication, we have an obligation to communicate. Here, we take the time to talk with one another and to listen. We believe that information is meant to move, and that information moves people. And then finally, on excellence, they said, we are satisfied with nothing less than the very best in everything we do. We will continue to raise the bar for everyone. The great fun here will be for all of us to discover just how good we can really be. That's what they said in their 1998 annual report. Oh, the company? You may be wondering which company said this. A little firm named Enron. You may recall that Enron died a quick and painful death in December of 2001 when it filed for bankruptcy after having used fraudulent accounting to keep debt off its books and to inflate its assets. It overstated its profits by something around $600 million over three years. And that's just a lesson that words alone will not guide you to where you need to be. If you want to have those kinds of attributes and those kinds of aspirations, great. But if you don't act that way, they mean nothing. It's like Senator Alan Simpson said, if you have integrity, nothing else matters. If you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. And when it comes to integrity, you either have it or you don't. You can't be somewhat filled with integrity. You can't have a lot of integrity. Either you have integrity or you don't. Finally, I wanted to share with you a story about the true price of integrity. It has to do with Huntsman Chemical Corporation. John M. Huntsman Sr. was the founder and CEO of Huntsman. And he came to an agreement with Emerson Campen, who was chairman and CEO of Great Lakes Chemical Company. The agreement was that Great Lakes would buy 40% of Huntsman for $54 million. And John Huntsman was one of these guys who liked to seal a deal with a handshake. And that's exactly what he did with Campen. They shook. $54 million it was. And it was a pretty simple transaction. And by the time the corporate attorneys finalized the paperwork seven months later for this simple transaction, the handshake still stood. But during the time, during that intervening time, the price of raw materials had plummeted. And the profits that Huntsman saw were astronomical. So one day, Huntsman got a call from Emerson Campen at Great Lakes Chemical, and he said, hey, according to my bankers, the 40% of your company that I wanted to buy is now worth $250 million. And Campen felt that under those circumstances, the $54 million price that they had agreed upon with that handshake seven months ago wasn't fair. And wanted to pay more. He said, I I can't commit Great Lakes to making up the full estimated value, so how about we split the difference? He was willing to pay Huntsman almost $100 million more than they agreed. And you know what Huntsman did? What he said? He said, we agreed to a price of $54 million, and that's the price I expect you to pay. And Campen was flabbergasted. And he said, but that's not fair to you. And Huntsman said, hey, you negotiate for your company and I'll negotiate for mine. And the sale went through for the originally agreed upon $54 million. Now, Huntsman operated on the principle that his word and a handshake were his bond. And he wasn't willing to compromise on that. He stood by his principle, even for a hundred million dollars. His integrity was worth more to him 
than any amount of money. Who among us can say we have integrity like that? It just might be something to aspire to. Hey, thanks for joining me here once again. Just a reminder, if you'd like to get in touch, the email address is timeless at scottmonte.com. Hit that rate and review and subscribe button. Well, those are three different buttons, really, but, you know, hit all of them. Don't mash them. Just be careful about what you do. And let people know what you think of the show. Our theme music is Americana Aspiring by Kevin MacLeod. As you tackle the week ahead, you think about integrity. I hope your actions inspire other people to learn more, dream more, do more, and become more. Because that's what timeless leaders do. I'm Scott Monty. Thanks, and I'll see you on the internet.